एस बी टी एल वेबकास्ट में आपका स्वागत है मेटाफोरिकली लोटस इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट प्लांट इन द सैक्रेड लिटरेचर ऑफ इंडिया सैक्रेड स्क्रिप्चर्स लाइक रामायण डिस्क्राइब भगवान राम एज नीलांबुज श्यामल कोमलांगम means looking like a dark blue lotus this national flower of india is known by various different names in indian sanskrit literature it is called padma it is called rajiv it is called arvind it is called ambuj it is called pankaj and one more name it is also called utpal pallal in sanskrit language is a pond and ut means above this plant is a hydrophyte meaning a plant found in water there are various different uh, botanical features found in the lotus out of those botanical features one of them is uh, presence of conical thalamus the thalamus in lotus flowers is cone shaped and seeds are seen at its center actually thalamus is the structure on which the floral whorls are arranged that is the condensed axis on which the sepals petals androecium gynoecium uh, um, pistils they are all arranged the second thing botanical feature of lotus is presence of hypo um, sorry epistomatic leaves stomata are minute pores on the surface of leaves the gaseous exchange during the process of photosynthesis and other activities inside the plant cells that takes place mainly through the stomata the pores present on the leaves lotus has its lower surface floating on water so the possibility of gaseous exchange there is minimal so such plants mostly hydrophytes in which the beyond leaves are found the gaseous exchange takes place through the upper surface of the leaf and that is called epistomatic leaf on the contrary if you take example of uh, maize then these leaves you will see equally green on both sides because stomata are almost equally distributed on both surface of the leaves in maize plant and that is one of the reasons um it is called amphistomatic leaf in corn in maize the leaves are amphistomatic means stomata are distributed on upper as well as lower surface of the leaf in comparison lotus is just an epistomatic lotus has just an epistomatic leaf this is one more botanical feature found in the lotus
William Wordsworth, a great British poet. He saw a host of golden daffodils fluttering and dancing with a breeze. And his heart dances with those golden daffodils. Literature is a great source of studying the flora and fauna. Literature inspires the taxonomists. Science when fortified with art, it becomes a bliss, pure bliss. Kavi Kuluguru Kalidas is one of the great poets in ancient Sanskrit literature of India. His great works like Abhigyan Shakuntalam, Ritu Samhar, Raghuvamsh are couple of examples of extraordinary contributions to the Sanskrit literature. Kalidas also compiled a lyrical work called Ritu Samhar Rutu Samhar. In Sanskrit language, Rutu means season and Samhar has two absolutely contrasting meanings. One of them is destruction and other is Samhar means a compendium, a collection. Ritu Samhar is description of six seasons which make the 12 months of Indian calendar system. And Kalidas has described various different plant species, flowering plants specifically, and the blooming and other botanical features associated with them. <coughs> In modern botany, what we study is flowers have uh, a specific time of their flowering, we learn that as photoperiodism or photoperiod. We describe, we classify the plants into various different types like uh, day blooming plants or night blooming plants or uh, long day plants or long uh, short day plants or day neutral plants. Uh, the plants which bloom at night. These are all descriptions those come in the modern notion of biology. But if we look at Kalidasa's work, then that is also, uh, that includes his keen observation uh, of these flowering patterns in various different seasons. And here comes the strength of the beauty of Indian poetry enriched with botanical knowledge. Hello friends, this is Lakshmi Raman Oza and you are watching SBTL webcasts. After capturing Persian Empire, Alexander came to India in 4th century before Christ. India was divided into 16 Mahajanapad that time. One of the powerful Janapad states 
that time was Magadh. It was Nand dynasty. And this was the period when there appeared a great kingmaker on the political canvas of India. Acharya Vishnu Gupta Chanak All over the world, Chanakya is known for his book, Arthashastra, famously called Kautilya's Arthashastra. The book is all about governance, political framework, economics, espionage, and various different aspects of statecraft. Kautilya's Arthashastra is one of the authentic books that is studied all over this planet. In many countries, there are people who consider this book as a standard reference book when it comes to statecraft or governance or especially espionage. Chanakya was a very powerful person, a kingmaker, who replaced the dynasts of Magadh by Chandragupta Maurya. And this was a very important event in the history of India. Chanakya's Arthashastra. Its direct meaning is Arthashastra means economics. But this is a compendium of almost 15 volumes. All these books are about various different subjects covered under the roof of economics. Chanakya has mentioned even the references of superintendents and their duties and especially in the second book in 14th chapter he talks about the forest products these forest products and their utilities their uses the policies of the government regarding the forest products various different types of trees and their economic importance and specifically in 24th chapter of second volume Chanakya talks about the Krushi Tantra and Gulma Vraksha Ayurved. Krushi Tantra is technique of agriculture and Gulm Vraksha Ayurved it includes two words together, two disciplines of ancient India, its knowledge system. One is science of gulm means succulents. And the second one is Vriksha Yurved. And this is itself a very big subject that broadly means botany or understanding of plant world in ancient India. It has references from Parashara Sanhita, Vishnu Puran, Padma Puran, Atharva Ved, and various different uh, scattered references of Upanishads also. And there is 
a unanimous thread woven between all these books which we cannot call as mythological texts there is authentic sacred geography connected when it comes with puran we find those places that specific biodiversity in those regions even today also Vanaspati is a Sanskrit word. It is derived from two words. Van means forest and pati means master. Master of the forest. Charak was father of Indian medicine. while sushrut was father of indian surgery while classifying plants both of them have used the word vanaspati for those plants which apparently do not bear any flower but they produce fruits if we take examples of plants belonging to genus ficus most of the plants belonging to genus ficus they bear fruits in an inflorescence called hypanthodium it is a closed structure and the flowers are within that closed structure and pollination takes place inside them this inflorescence we call as hypanthodium and then after pollination it grows into a larger fruit these flowers are invisible they are not visible from outside but they grow further into a fruit and this is the definition of vanaspati in vriksha ayurveda in botany we classify fruits into two types true fruits and false fruits this is based upon which part of flower is growing into the edible part of fruit for example usually it happens that after double fertilization the ovary ripens into fruit and ovule ripens into seed but if the edible part of fruit is made from some other part than ovary then it is called false fruit by that definition fig is a false fruit it develops from an inflorescence that is called hypanthodium type of inflorescence hypanthodium is a closed box it's a kind of stuffing placed into the momo in marathi we 
make something called modak and the entire covering of the uh, inflorescence axis it envelops those flowers completely flowers are present inside that envelope and when a female pig wasp it enters inside this inflorescence lays eggs there the larvae of that wasp they move inside that inflorescence where the male and female flowers are there and pollination takes place takes place inside them now look at this the flower is enclosed by definition given by sushrut and charak both in sushrut sanhita and charak sanhita vanaspatis are those plants which develop fruits without any visible flowers on them and fig has its flower enclosed inside the inflorescence called hypanthodium while the entire inflo inflorescence axis it grows into a fruit edible fruit and this is how we can call figs sacred fig as an example of vanaspati they have been mentioned as samidhas in different uh, commentaries on ved vedanta and they have been mentioned as important medicinal plants also ashwatha is also fig carolus linius named this um, people tree as ficus religiosa its binomial name is ficus religiosa now this fig this uh, people tree it is vanaspati because it also develops fruits just like fig most of the species belonging to the genus ficus they show this type of fruit where flowers are invisible they are avyakt and yet the edible fruit grows on it by definition of vriksha ayurved this is a plant that has invisible flowers but it has visible fruits one more thing Shrimad Bhagavad Gita says in Shrimad Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, "Vrukshanam ashvathosmi." So whether we are going to call people tree as a vruksh, or we are going to classify that as vanaspati, as per the Charak Sahita and Sushrut Sahita. so here we come to one of the brilliant points which mostly remains ignored and that is a possibility of a hierarchical system of classification in vriksha ayurved means ashwatha is a vriksha and specifically it is a vriksha which is of the type vanaspati means it is a tree that develops fruits but the flowers are invisible so it is really a matter of study study of riksha ayurved to comprehensively understand whether indian knowledge system had hierarchical system of classification just like carolus linnaeus gave to the world of biology so what we are going to understand it henceforth in this topic is what exactly is this box in box 
type of classification system. In the next part of this uh, topic, we are going to understand how the linear system of hierarchies that was put in botany and what exactly are the hierarchies, how did they grow ev eventually in the history of taxonomy. So for today, let us stop here. Thank you for listening me so kindly and see you again in the next part. Thank you.